Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to tackle the topic of what we call standing waves, also called resonant waves, standing waves and resonance. So what you have here is a situation where you have a complicated sounding title, just like a lot of things in physics. But in reality, if any of you have had any experience with a jump rope on a playground or strumming a guitar string, you've actually already had experience with standing waves. It's really not a mysterious topic. Up until now, We've talked about waves and we've talked fundamentally about what waves are and those are disturbances that travel, they propagate, they go somewhere. Water waves might start 100 miles away and then carry energy inland to the shore. And so that's sort of the, the, the uh, defining thing with a wave is that it travels somewhere, it carries energy somewhere. A standing wave is basically a wave that bounces off a boundary or maybe it's like a guitar string that's physically connected at two endpoints rigidly to two rigid endpoints that can't move. And so basically you have vibrations and, and those waves are traveling along, along the string and then they bounce back. And so you get this bouncing back and forth just like you might imagine a jump rope. If somebody holds a jump rope, you flick a wave to the end, it's gonna bounce right back. Well, if you do that enough, the wave is trying to go this direction, but you get a reflection somewhere. Uh, and so that wave, you get some interference. And so a standing wave is basically a wave-shaped thing that doesn't actually go anywhere. It doesn't actually, pro it's not allowed to propagate anywhere. It's, that's why it's called standing. It stays in one place. That's what a standing wave is. That's a verbal description of what a standing wave is. We're going to get into lots of pictures, lots of demonstrations. We'll, we'll get into it and you'll totally understand it. But just remember, a standing wave is something that looks like a wave, but it's not allowed to go anywhere. That's why it stands in one place. Okay, now let's review a little bit about what we did in the last section. We talked about interference of waves, superposition of waves. In that section we had a wave going a certain direction and a totally separate different wave going in the same direction. Everything about these two waves is exactly the same except there's a phase difference between those two waves and we said that if you have two waves going in the same direction that differ only by a phase shift then the end result is another traveling wave. And the amplitude of that wave was given by what we calculated and we gave the form of the wave and all that. But the fundamental key thing to remember from the last section that's crucial just to draw the comparison to this section is that you have two waves going in the same direction. They only disappeared by, uh, uh, differed by a phase shift, which means one of them is shifted with respect to the other. And the end result was a bona fide wave, a sine kx minus omega t type of wave. It had an amplitude out front that depended on the phase uh, shift, but it, a constant amplitude, but it was a real traveling wave. In this section what we'll find is that when you have waves going in opposite directions, right, opposite directions this is different than the last section, you're not going to get traveling waves at all as a result of that. So let's do that. Let's consider two waves. So we're going to consider two waves just like last section, uh, same amplitude, uh, same omega, which is the frequency. Uh, we're going to consider them going in opposite. That's what the OPP means, directions. And really and truly, this is the fundamental difference between this section and the last section. Last section, two waves are going in the same direction, interfering. This direction, we're going to consider two waves traveling in totally opposite directions. Uh, so opposite directions. So this would be a similar situation if, as if you had a wave bouncing off of a wall and coming back and interacting with the ori original wave. Or it could be you know, a speaker here shooting out waves this way or an antenna, let's say, if you're talking about electromagnetic waves, and then another speaker or antenna shooting out waves this way. And so these two waves are coming and they're literally interacting here. Now, exactly the same as in the previous section, I told you, any waves interacting at the same place in the same time, you simply add them up. Literally, algebraically, add the Y values together and that's your resultant. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to have a wave coming in from the left, wave coming in from the right, and as they pass each other, at every instant in time, we're going to simply add algebraically the Y values up. We're going to get a new wave. Or actually, we're going to get a new standing wave is what we're really going to get. Let's go ahead and, and, and make our way to, to that point. So let's draw a picture. I don't want to do any math yet. Here's what we have. Time T1, we're going to have two waves. Now the only way I'm going to be able to draw this is here is a wave 